Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host Jennifer and today is Monday and on Monday we show our makes for the past seven days give or take. There is loudness and chaos in my house because I am recording this on a Friday evening. Because my niece just got home from work and decided she's going to do the dishes as soon as she walked in the door. Good kid. <laughs> I don't know why. She literally walked in the door, turned on music, which you may hear in the background, and immediately started emptying the dishwasher. I'm like, well, whatever. So I popped some chicken in the oven. Mr. Cinnamon spilled Coke in his, van, in his truck, so him and Little Man are cleaning that up, but I'm sure that when Little Man comes back in the house, he's going to be loud because he had field day today at school and he is very energetic and rambunctious. <sighs> so that's what's going on. Now, because I didn't give a Mother's Day update last week, because I pre-recorded that video as well, we're going to give a Mother's Day update. I'm going to tell you what I can remember. Because <laughs> that was well over a week ago by the time you're watching this. Mother's Day was pretty awesome for me. Um, and I know it's it's been over a week, but it was pretty good. I had a pretty good Mother's Day. I always do, though. Um, you guys know that we made the glass art for... Did I bring my phone? I posted pictures and videos and stuff. We made the glass art for my front yard. They're beautiful. They held up well to the rain and the sun this week. So I am hopeful that they will hold up to the weather long term. I had a lot of questions on that. So to answer most of the questions were the glass was thrifted. It was a mixture of crystal and glass that was from the thrift store for a good price. The, the glue that held it together was epoxy. We used epoxy from the Dollar Store, from Dollar Tree has epoxy, little tubes. There's barely anything in those tubes though, so be prepared, it's not actually that great of a deal. Um, <laughs> there was enough epoxy in the tubes from Dollar 25 Tree to literally glue one plate to one bowl. Not very much at all. So we required several of those, and at that point I was like, just go buy me a big one, and I used up all of that one from the thrift store, or from the Home Depot. And, um, they had to cure overnight for my safety before they were put up on the poles. So they actually, Mr. Cinnamon never finished his. He glued his pieces together, but he never figured a way to actually hang it up or display it in any way. So it's still in the backyard because he never did anything with it. And I'm not touching it because it's not mine. <laughs> I'm tired of picking up after grown people. <laughs> it's beautiful though, it turned out. Um, the girls, my niece and my daughter, uh, they're both my daughters, let's face it, okay? They went up to the flower shop, not the flower shop, the garden center. We have a local garden center not far from here. And Juju is a member of their membership, so she gets deals and discounts and stuff. And I was like, okay, my kid's smarter than me because I didn't know they had a discount club through this fl flower garden place, right? So she went up there and they pitched in money together and they purchased me a hydrangea bush. bush. I have no idea where it's gonna go. Um, don't really know how to take care of one. <laughs> I've never had one. Every time I've tried to grow anything that's even remotely close to a hydrangea, I've killed it. Lilac bush killed it. Um, so I, I have to figure out, actually I have to go buy dirt and then I think it, I can plant it next to my rose bush. And I think that will work, but and they also bought me um, some potted dahlias, which are my favorite flower of all times. Um, and they bought me some really nasty smelling chrysanthemums, which I hate, but I'm not going to tell them that. <laughs> I literally told them before they left, I don't like mums. Like, I don't like chrysanthemums. I don't like... And they, yeah, bought me this real smelly orange ones, you know. But the bugs, or the bees love them. And what else did they purchase? They got me a pink Gerber daisy and another flower that's like purple spikies. It's really pretty. And since I don't think I have my phone, I can't show you the pictures, but they got me flowers. They got me like flowers I could plant. And I planted my dahlia bulbs that I purchased and I've had over a month and didn't have time to plant them. So those got planted. I weeded my garden bed in the front yard. It was a really nice Mother's Day. Mr. Cinnamon brought me flowers and he bought me a, uh, I don't know what they're called. It's a windmill of sorts. It's the ones you see on farms. I already have one. He bought me one from Tractor Supply that has a cow, a mama and a baby cow, and the cow 
is a whirly gig so he he goes like this with the 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 blade is going on the whatever I just said it was called <laughs> you know what I'm talking about they're like triangles and they have a fan and a weather vane thing on it is escaping me I'm tired today has been exceptionally long and dragged on and on and on and my brain is not functioning properly um I also probably had too much sugar today because I had potatoes and my my um my body chemistry gets really off when I have things I'm not supposed to eat like that and also I'm way past having supposed to have eaten dinner so I'm sure my sugar is jacked up right now but dinner's in the oven i put some chicken thighs to roast in the oven and uh we're probably gonna have some roasted cauliflower with it as well so yeah my mother's day was really good little man brought me home a card and he was so proud of it because he made it and it's some sort of something diagram or something to where if you look at it at this way it reads one word if you look at it this way it reads another word and he was very proud of his work on that and I gotta tell you, like, of all the... Oh, and Juju made me a home, a handmade card. Like, she actually sewed paper together. It was really pretty. Um, I know that I got more than that, but I don't remember what else I got. Didn't get any yarn. <laughs> Which surprises me. That's usually their go-to is yarn, candles, or bath products. Bentley didn't buy me anything. He's a bad boy. Are you a bad boy? He's like, no, I don't even know if you can see him. He's like literally laying down right here. I don't think you can see him. He's right here. Nope. He's right there. <laughs> Somewhere. He's not in that pile of crap, but he's like right in front of it. So I don't think you can actually see him. Anyway, what have I been making for the past week? Well, you guys saw this because I did the tutorial. This is Miss Libby Shawl number one. This is the one I did for the tutorial. I think it turned out really pretty. Um, it's a good size and I really like the way it fits. So if it lays good on shoulders and the, the fact that it's a V, I hate triangle shawls. Okay. Triangle shawls do not stay on properly. Why anybody makes triangle shawls exclusively? I have no idea. I hate triangle shawls. That's why when I try to make shawls, I will either make a dip like that, like an arch, or I try to do V. Don't get me wrong, I have some tutorials and stuff where it's just very basic, but this fits and wears so much better because it wears more like a shirt, so it stays on your shoulders where it's supposed to be. And if you want to wrap it this way, it works better this way too because it's not all choked up on your throat. I personally don't like wearing them this way. I find this to be just too much is going on in my front area. Even if I tucked it into my cardigan, it's just, it's too much around my neck. I don't like that. So when I wear a shawl, I wear it over my shoulders. So there's this one. This is made from Karen Cotton Cakes. One Karen Cotton Cake made the shawl. It's pretty good size. I never did ball up my scraps. I think I probably had enough to do another repeat looking at it now. And I may attempt that, but really... I'm probably not going to because once I'm done with something, I'm done. So we finished that this week. And I finished the one that's actually for Miss Libby. And this, I also had a little bit left over from this. But this would not have done another repeat because there's, I don't even think there's enough to do another row. This one is slightly different. This one is more along, because I had more yarn to work with, this is more along the lines of the original, the prototype, if you will. This one, it's more similar to this one because I kind of tried to replicate what I did here, whereas with, and I didn't even replicate it 100%, like there's a lot going on here, but I replicated this part here which is slightly different from the tutorial that you guys saw. I just added um, a twisted stitch in it. And in the row after that, the, the next repeat row of that, I did, so see here's the twisted stitch right here. And then I, I went to go repeat it again. And here I put like two double crochets in there and the twisted one in the top. 
So that is the only difference between this one and that one. And the other two that I made were with a four weight wasted or worsted weight yarn. What what's happening out the window? What are we staring at? Is the squirrel out there? Thank you. He's like, I think worth my time, Mom. It's not worth my time. So the difference between this one and that one, this is a this says it's a sport weight. This is Dahlia from Hobie. It says it's a number it says fine number two. This is a number one. I don't care what they say. It's a number one. I've worked with this style of yarn a hundred times. It's a number one. So what I did differently is I did more repeat rows because it's a thinner yarn and because I had more yardage. So the cotton cake is 530 of a worsted weight, whereas this one is 874 yards of a number two. So I just did more, and this is why I was trying to tell you guys in the tutorial, you can change it up. It The row count is not going to matter at all. Like, it just works. I don't know why it works, but it works. So I did about this many rows. <laughs> I didn't count anything. I just went until it started to change to the green. Like, more, like, it starts to change in the green here, but when it started to really change into, like, the green and the blue is when I decided to switch the stitch. So I just basically went by that. And then when I decided to switch from this stitch to the bottom row is when I started to run out of um, yarn. I was like, we're, we're kind of kind of close. We're just going to call it a day and end this stitch. And honestly, I was getting bored of doing this stitch. So I switched it up and then, yeah. This is that shawl. This is going to have the ends weaved in. And this will go to Miss Libby next week. It is... Definitely bigger, but it's also more yardage. So, 500 yards of a four weight versus 800 yards of a really, really skinny yarn. That's the difference. So, this one is much bigger, much roomier for someone who has maybe a bigger body definitely works for me and it's beautiful and I really might make myself one because I have more of this style of cake um, where it's the really thin yarn it's not I don't think I have any more of the dahlia but I have I'm trying to remember what I have I know that I have a couple of cakes from AC Moore back in the day I've been holding on to them and those would work but I also think I have some, I think I have some king cakes from Hobie as well, which are just not as beautiful and colorful as the Dahlia cake. Isn't this pretty though? It's just so pretty. Very roomy. It's very long in the front. I have never seen Miss Libby in person. I've only seen a picture of her. And she doesn't look like a petite person, so I think this will work anyway really well for her. I'm so proud of this. It was funny because I had my hair down in the pictures, and the purple is fading, like, a lot. And so many people were like, the show matches your hair so well. <laughs> and I'm like, it's because my hair is, like, 12 different shades right now. <laughs> we, got, we got a lot going on. I have the dye to color it. It's just taking time to actually put it in my hair. It's not dye dye, it's really like colored conditioner. Um, the hair dye I use is Arctic Fox. And because my hair is bleached underneath, it just I just put the color right on top. And it's literally colored conditioner and it could sit in your hair overnight if you wanted. And it just soaks in. The only bad thing is um, the shampoo I use, because I have skin problems, I have to use special shampoo, it rinses out really easily, but um, Unlike some of the other hair dyes I've used, this stuff actually does not stain anything, does not bleed all over your towels, does not stain your shower, does not stain your skin when you dye your hair, so Arctic Fox for the win. But it doesn't like bleach your hair out or anything like that, so like if you have dark hair it ain't gonna work. But so that's the second crochet item I finished this week. So I have to 
weave in those ends and we will call it a day. Oh, dang it. I have some yarn that I finished spinning, but it's wet. I'll go grab it. Apparently Oreo wanted to come back in with us. So like I said, this is wet. It also has a really thick part. <laughs> We're probably just going to cut that out. This is not my favorite yarn that I've spun. Matter of fact, I don't really like it. Um, I'm still going to turn it into something. This was the Revolution Fibers Bambino. And it's a bamboo wool blend. I don't like this yarn or this fluff at all. I don't like it. Um, I did not enjoy working with this. It turned out so muddied. So it looks... It looks pretty. But when you spin it, and I tried separating the colors a little bit. But the colors just blend into each other too much. I couldn't get it to, to a barber pole or anything like that. It just kept like fading into itself. And this army green is hideous. And also, um, and it's like half purple, half green. Because I was trying to use bamboo for the first time. Don't like bamboo. I don't like bamboo. And I'm glad that I was given the advice from Chevy Rail to stay away from the bamboo until you get used to other yarns. Because bamboo is a little bit harder to work with. And she was not lying. It kept sliding off of itself. It didn't want to grasp on itself. It didn't want to like twist properly. And so I was, I'm also having a lot of um, grip issues. So I kept dropping my spindle, which was irritating me to no end. And I really struggled through this because also I think the color is hideous. I think it's hideous. This is like puce. And that's like puke. <laughs> it's not pretty. It's not pretty. So I'll show you up close what it looks like. See, we have slight barber pulling, but from a distance, it's just ugly olive green. And I don't like olive green. So this is actually hanging up to dry because I washed it. Um, I will hang that back up to dry. It will be made into something, but it will be something that I donate out or give away because I think those colors are hideous. That does not make me happy. It does not spark joy. And there's a lot of negative energy in that yarn because when I was spinning it, I kept dropping it and I kept breaking. It kept like pulling away from itself and it kept. So I have determined that I like stickier yarns. I like yarns that stick on themselves a little bit better. <laughs> And we're just going to stick with that for now until I decide I want to use bamboo again. That's going to go in the chuck it bucket and we're just going to call it a day. Now, when I finished the really pretty Miss Libby shawl, the pastel one, my reward was to finish spinning that crap. <laughs> Why that was my reward, I have no idea because that felt more like a punishment, but I really wanted it off my spindle so I could have my spindle back. Okay. Because I love my spindle. I have two spindles that I could borrow from Little Man. He has not spun anything. He's been riding his bike. But that's fine. He has his bucket. If he, if and when he decides to come back to spinning, it's there. I also don't like the feel of his spindles. They are very powdery feeling. Well, I painted one. One is shiny and glossy. But it's it's heavy. And it's clunky. And it, I just I prefer my spindle. I like my spindle a lot. I wish I could put more yarn on that spindle, but I mean, it works and it's a good spindle. Now, what I did today, because I finished that god awful ugly bambino bamboo yarn, I rewarded myself by, and I didn't take a picture beforehand, but I made a bunch of roll eggs from the yarn from Paradise Fibers, the fluff. Now, if you remember, I bought fluff in gorgeous colors. And I spun some of it up, but I really struggled with it because I didn't realize, you stinky dog, that was so gross. I don't know which one of you did that, but like seriously, we don't do that in this room. You should be ashamed of yourself and on camera. <sighs> you stink. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them out because they, one of them let it loose. They are going to make my yarn smell bad. I think it's Bentley. He has had an upset stomach all day today. I don't know what he got into. Okay, so 
it was what I ordered was actually fluff for felting not for spinning and I didn't know the difference because I bought it it was one of the first fluff purchases I purchased now if you're new here I refer to roving <laughs> as fluff I just like the name okay it's roving it, it's 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 fluff okay so when I matter of fact trying to see where I know that I spun this up it's in a it's in a bag what did I do with the bag anyway I spun some of this fluff up before I don't know where I put it it's beautiful it worked up okay the fibers are like this long they're super short so when you go to spin it instead of the fibers like grabbing like this to twist they break apart really easily so I was gifted from one of you beautiful people which I think is over there I was gonna reach in my drawer but I moved it because I have a bucket over here that's just spinning materials now I put it on my my blending board and I made what's called a roll lag which basically looks like a snail <laughs> you line all the fibers up going the correct way I mixed in cotton because the cotton was also really hard to spin by itself and I struggled with cotton because the cotton was unprocessed cotton these are all things I learned as a learning process. If this is over your head and you're not following me, I'm going to show you pretty things in a minute and it will just make sense, okay? So I used the blending board, which is like a big giant dog brush on a board. <laughs> I have a video showing me doing this. And I worked the fibers up together. I mixed in some of the cotton. I rolled it up into what's called a roll egg. And I decided last night my reward for getting that god awful bamboo off of my spindle and for finishing the Miss Libby shawl that took me three weeks to finish. The the one for the tutorial was two days. The number one weight, several weeks. It was just so much work. <laughs> just it took, and, and I did I wasn't finding time to finish crocheting on it. And I wasn't finding joy in crocheting on it because life was I, I, life is just life, okay right now. And so I just wanted to get it done. And so my reward for completing was to play with my roll eggs and make something pretty and colorful for myself. So this is the first one I spun up from my roll eggs. The white parts are cotton. It is very thick thin on purpose. So there's parts that have what's called a slub. I made slubs. I was practicing working with slubs. They are very fat chunks. They will look like blossoms or flowers when this is knit or crocheted up. Um, I was very much practicing techniques. I was practicing thick thin. This is all done with my drop spindle. It is on my Swift because I'm stretching the fibers a little bit before I wash them and set them. This has colors of a rich raspberry a sunshine yellow and more of like a, a wine color this is what it looks like all blended together all of these roll legs were similar but not the same so this next tank that is on my spindle looks different because I actually ran out of yellow in the process of doing this and so there are six roll eggs in here <laughs> there's about six roll eggs in here this one actually might have five roll eggs so it's about the same amount of yarn if not a little bit more the only difference is two of the roll eggs do not have yellow so what you're seeing mostly is the raspberry color on the outside with the there's a little bit of like an orangey color and then the the purpley burgundy color and the white again is cotton and it's going to look similar to that but these are going to be two absolutely separate different colorways because this one has more yellow and when i blended them that was set one of the blending board this was set two of the blending board and so what I did was different. So the way I laid the colors on the board were different. So I did on that one, I did yellow, purple, 
orange, yellow, purple, orange, and then I did a layer of cotton in between, and then I did the same thing on top. Whereas with this one, I did more of like a fade, so it went yellow to orange to purple or whatever. And so the ones underneath will look more like a fade, whereas this is more variegated. So, and like I said, the ones on the outside, I ran out of yellow. So the, out, the outer two row legs do not have any yellow in it. So this is very much going to be a way different um, colorway. But they're still going to go on a project together. Because it's all the same yarn. And I am not nothing if a mixologist. <laughs> so that's what I have been working on this week. I don't think I've worked on anything else. I have a million things I want to work on. I really want to knit. I really want to knit up some of my hand spun yarn or even crochet it. But I also have a pattern that I want to get started on that is a knit pattern. I just have to find the yarn that I want to use for that tutorial. It's not a tutorial for the pattern. I also want to make a honeycomb blanket. So I have a long list of things that I want to do and I want to get started, but it's a matter of a, finding the time. It is a really chaotic time of the year. If you don't know, the end of the school year is pure chaos for most people because the kids are crazy. The kids are crazy. Like, it's about to be the end of the school year. They get all rambunctious and crazy. And even the teachers will tell you, kids get crazy at the end of the year. And they're just counting the days till it's summer vacation and we can be done with it. The weather starts making them act crazy. Like, it's all kinds of things. But also, here personally in my household, there's things going on with Mr. Cinema's work. There's my niece's home for the summer, so there's an extra person, and she has a job, and she doesn't have a car, so there's, like, figuring out her transportation, and, like, there's just a lot of extra pieces that are going on right now, and I'm trying to figure out how we're navigating everything. And as you can tell, I'm exhausted all the time, and I'm not sleeping real well, so. <laughs> That's what's going on. We're trying to find time to do all the things we want to do while still trying to manage all the things that have to be done um but yeah even though i did i don't like the bamboo even though i don't like it i think it's ugly i didn't like working with it because it was hard to work with i learned something from it and we're going to call this a learning experience and i think when it's crocheted or knit up into something it will be interesting but until that happens it's it does not bring me joy I could actually probably spin that with, ply it with a brighter, a brighter color. I could ply it with a brighter color and it might bring me more joy or happiness. But right now it's just going to dry and it's going to be skeined up and it's going to be put somewhere because I don't really, I'm not happy with it. But this, this stuff, now this, it's still, because like I said, this is the much shorter fibers that was meant for felting. Which I didn't know when I purchased it. Um, because I lined up all the fibers on the blending board, it was drastically easier to use. It still had parts where I wanted to break apart or pull apart. Uh, especially the yellow was really brittle and like just did not want to stick to itself. Um, I spun both of these up in a couple hours. Like it went really fast. And I enjoyed it. And I really like the way it looks with the cotton mixed in. So while I hated the cotton, <laughs> and the cotton was off in a weak point where it would want to break at the cotton bits, I think it's really unique looking and I think it's really pretty and I probably would buy more cotton to play with it in this type of fashion. Um, it worked better when I layered it in the roll egg. So I had wool on the top and wool on the bottom and the cotton was in between the layers so when you roll it up so when you're pulling it you're not getting just cotton you're getting bits of wool wrapped around the cotton i also really enjoy rolling or spinning from a roll egg because the roll eggs are only this long but they're like all of the wool is spiraled into the coil and it very easily will wrap around your wrist and hang out right there <laughs> So you don't have fiber just hanging down, which often will get tangled up when I'm spinning. So I really like roll eggs. I like making them, and I like spinning from them. Now don't get me wrong, I love a good, 
Uh, I have a, I have Rolex right here. These are Rolex I made. They're just, it's rolled up fiber. This is 100% merino wool. Actually, nope, this, this has cotton in it too. So this is mixed with a little bit of cotton. So I blended cotton in with the merino. And I only have two of these, so this isn't gonna make very much, but I mean, it's something, right? So I spun from this. So when I'm spinning from this, you're literally pulling from one end. And sometimes it will spiral from the inside, sometimes it will spiral from the outside. But I hold it and it just literally curls around my wrist like that. So it stays out of the way when I'm spinning. Which I kind of love that. kind of love that. But I have so much fiber I want to work with. Like, I have the new cotton. Or not cotton. The, the bats from the Sheep and Wool Festival. I can't wait to play with these. I want to play with them so bad. But I have to earn them. I have to earn them. Isn't that beautiful? This can be so pretty. And I'm going to really try to like play with those colors and see what we can create so that it's not all muddy. But I am a beginner. I've only been... I have only been spinning for, what, three months? If that. It might... I think it's been about three months. So I think I'm making fantastic progress. I'm practicing a lot of techniques. I'm just... You guys have been seeing a lot on the channel of me doing stuff and me showing you that I'm messing it up because I know that I get a lot of people that say, I tried X, Y, and Z and I failed at it. Yeah, you only fail when you quit. You only fail when you quit. It is okay to screw it up. It's okay to have parts that are ugly. Like I'm looking at this and I'm sure there are parts of this that are just absolutely hideous. And there's parts of like that whole bamboo one is hideous to me but i'm sure there's parts that are absolutely hideous or they're messed up there might even be parts of this that fall apart i'm gonna be real honest i might be crocheting it up and it just falls apart it happens because i'm new and the fiber is has really short fibers it does not deter me and that's why i've been showing you guys my mistakes because i don't want it to deter you either I have seen so many people show their fluff spun up in my Facebook group specifically or emailed me and it looks very much like my first couple of skeins of yarn that I spun up. It's very fat, it's very like wonky looking and it's just to me is so beautiful that you did that. You did that. You should be proud of yourself. That's fantastic. We all start out as beginners. Nobody just picks something up and goes, oh I'm brilliant. I mean... There are people who are brilliant and just pick things up and like get it like that. And then there's people like us, us normal folk who screw up over and over again, but we don't quit and we keep trying until we get it because it's something we really want to succeed at. It's something we really want to We I, I just enjoy it. Just have fun doing it. I swear, like when I'm spinning, when I crochet, I am with my mom. I am very much like I there's been times where I'm sitting there crocheting and I, I do get sad because I wish she was alive to see any of this because she has no idea about any of this like she died before I picked up a crochet hook I crocheted when I was a child I crocheted intermittently here and there throughout my life I never really learned crochet until about I want to say seven or eight years ago and that number changes because I honestly don't know what year I started crocheting, but it was about seven or eight years ago. Estimate could be longer than that, could be shorter, I don't know. <laughs> it was between the time my parents died. It was after my mom died, but before my dad died. Um, and my dad's been gone six years, so it's definitely longer than six years. Because I made him a hat before he died. Um, what was I saying? Oh, there's times where I'm crocheting and like I get sad because I wish my mom had seen this but at the same time like there's sometimes I just visualize her sitting across from me and she's crocheting and I'm crocheting and we're just talking about crochet or I'm showing her something cool I learned because I know way more about crochet than she did and she made beautiful things um, but I, I, I visualize her sitting there with me and crocheting with me and you know it makes me feel close to her when I'm spinning that's different I almost feel 
this is probably gonna sound really weird but I almost feel like I'm somehow connecting to my ancestry like somewhere somehow in like my ancestors spun yarn I feel like there's a connection somewhere to ancient times like way way back when you had to spill it, spin wool to get like warm garments you had to use animal products to to have clothing i feel a connection with some my roots somehow like i feel a deep connection but when i'm spinning i feel that deep connection with something deep inside of me i don't know if it's an ancestor thing it's a past life thing i don't know but I just feel really connected to spinning in a really unusual fashion um but also like crochet used to be very peaceful to me and it still is sometimes um i think over the years with the channel and everything and like i think it got twisted to become more of a job than just my sanity and i'm trying to reverse some of that and go back to crochet is my sanity crochet is my calm crochet is my my anti-anxiety anti-depression like that's what crochet has been to me um spinning because i refuse to sell any of my spun yarn because i refuse to commercialize my spun yarn i think that my spun yarn is gonna remain um something more sacred to me because I feel like I, I kind of like I destroyed my crochet a little bit by working it too hard <laughs> and so it changed now it's a job it's work and I, I'm trying like I said I'm trying to reverse that a little bit because crochet saved my life I'm gonna be real honest with that crochet absolutely saved my life I started crochet in a very hard very difficult point in my life and uh, I had the entire universe on my shoulders and I was breaking like I was breaking and I discovered crochet at a very pivotal moment in my life crochet saved my absolutely saved my life um I'm still here because of crochet and because of Jada Jada and Stitch is absolutely she's the one who taught me everything I know like I would sit and watch her videos I would when I was having really and I've talked about this on the channel before I was having really bad meltdowns like I was I was struggling mentally really hard because I had four kids in a very short amount of time and I had a lot on my shoulders that I was trying to repair children and I was I was not sleeping and I was I was stressed the F out <laughs> and I would take time every night and I would put on a Jaden Stitches video and I would put on my headphones so that I couldn't hear the world around me and I would sit and just listen to her for an hour talk because I felt at peace and I felt calm and I would do like Jaden Stitches tutorials and I, that's how I learned how to crochet and that was my my sanity for the day to get me through to the next day so you know and I also during that time would I have a bench in the back of my yard it's a hot pink bench Mr. Cinnamon built for me I would go out there and sit on the bench and just I needed to decompress for an hour I needed to not have people screaming at me or calling my name or arguing with me about what vegetables they're not going to eat and like the screaming at me was not a violent like abusive thing it was ADHD kids were in the house and they were screaming <laughs> my niece that lives with me now Hermione it was like she was my preparation for little man I'm not even kidding and I tell her that all the time is like I I I absolutely thank her for being my preparation to be able to handle little man because she was a much less version of him but oh my god some of the traits that they both have the very loud behavior the very I I'm gonna throw a fit for no reason I don't understand why <laughs> like, when they get tired both of them get really loud and obnoxious uh, even now she's 20 almost 21 years old she still gets very loud and obnoxious when she's tired and I have to tell her to go to bed because I'm not dealing with it <laughs> you're, you're being she used to spin in circles when she was tired like running and like running in circles 10 years old running and running and running and screaming wee, wee, like it's the end of the day I'm exhausted and she is like spiraling out of control <laughs> 
little man doesn't quite do that. He actually gets kind of like, he's totally different, but he's still very loud and obnoxious at night. But yeah, that was, it's my safety. And, and right now even, like today, today was a long day. Today was a really long day for me. I took my fluff and my spindle and I went and sat on the back deck with my dogs. And for a while it was just me and the dogs and then Juju came out and sat with me. I played some Fall Out Boy on my radio and I was just so chill. I was so chill. I was so chill I could have laid my head back and went to sleep but I know the second I closed my eyes the dogs would have started barking or the kids would have been like mom or the school would have called something. <laughs> I was so chill. So this is absolutely my reward. Absolutely my reward. So I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this Monday Mix videos. Um, I do have one video already recorded. I actually recorded a P.L. video. I know we're shocked. Um, that will be up probably Thursday because Thursday is traditionally P.L. And uh, that's all I really have planned for this week so far. I plan on filming a new, another tutorial actually for this. But I don't know if that's going to be done in a, in a, a timely manner or not. But um, I don't know if that will be up this week or not. I'm going to start it this week and see what I can get accomplished. But I'm not going to pressure myself because i got other stuff I want to do too. So with that, I'm going to let you go. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.